knowledge that Allah, first and foremost, is free of defects like the name Al-Quddus, because we said that part of the meanings of the name As-Salam is also from As-Salama, which means really well-being, safe from any kind of harm. So relative to Allah, it meant that he was without any defects. We said that recognizing Allah through this divine name as being free and without any kind of defects, free of any kind of defects, it meant then that the promises that he gave us in this life uh, of success for living a life like a prisoner were true. We should have no doubt about it. We sacrifice, we give up the things we might desire for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will reward us for it. We also said that it meant, uh, one of the meanings of the names, it meant uh, safety and peace. And uh, that state of peace, we should only seek it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he told us, it's only with the remembrance of Allah that hearts find rest. And this, in fact, is the real goal that each and every human being is striving for. Whether he knows it or whether she doesn't know it, that's really what they're looking for. In all of the things that people do, they want to find some sense of contentment. But we're looking in the wrong place. Some people try to find it in music. So they surround themselves in music. And they find some sense of uh, of uh, contentment. But when the music stops, because you can't live in music all the time, then it's gone. So it comes for a while and it's gone. Some people find it in drugs. You take certain drugs, you feel pleasant, you feel happy, whatever. But then the drug goes after a while. Then you feel down. Something artificial. It's not real. It will not keep you in that state of contentment. And people in order to try to keep in that state of contentment, end up overdosing and killing themselves. So, the real peace and contentment that people strive for in this life, it can only be found in remembrance of Allah. Being conscious of Allah and living lives in accordance with what Allah has told us to do. On the third level, we said, it meant that we would reflect this quality of peace and security in the society. That we would not be a cause of insecurity. We would try to be a source of security. When non-Muslims come into the Muslim society, they should feel a sense of security. And from my personal experience, I know in countries that I've lived where people practice Islam at a, a higher and higher level, we find the non-Muslims when they're asked, you know, what do you, how do you feel about living here? They say, we feel secure, we feel safe. Safety that we didn't feel back home in our countries. And that's, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. That is one of the consequences of the divine name as Salam being implemented in the society that people do have that sense of concern to ensure that those around them are safe from them. As the Prophet ﷺ had said, Al-Muslim man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi. That the true Muslim is one from whom Muslims are safe from his tongue and his hands. Then we said that the Prophet ﷺ used to pray using this name. Uh, after the prayers, he used to Make a supplication, Allahumma anta salam, wa minka salam, tabarak tayyad al jalal wal ikram. O Allah, you are peace, and peace comes from you. May you be blessed, O owner of glory and peace. Then we went on to say that the Prophet ﷺ told us to spread peace amongst us. To spread it, to make it a common uh, occurrence. We always give people salams whenever we go. Actually, the companions of the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, it was noted that if they were walking and a tree came between them, they had to go on either side as they were walking. When they came back together, they used to give salams to each other again. So much. Actually, non-Muslims living amongst Muslims 
to some degree, they find it a little annoying. You know, people coming into the office and giving greetings all the time. I mean, in other societies, you give greetings in the morning, that's it. One time, finished. No matter how many times you go out, you come in, whatever, that's it. So this thing of Muslims coming in all the time and greeting, and yeah, we have to greet again, and greeting, they find it annoying to some degree. Not really understanding that this greeting is in fact, you know, a, a, a spreading a good feeling. Because of course the greeting should be with a smile. As the Prophet ﷺ had said, that smiling at your brother is sadaqah, it's charity. So it shouldn't be, salam alaikum, you know, you're, you've got a frown, etc. It should be a pleasant, salam alaikum. People will feel good. They feel the, the peace that you are, that's emanating from you. So, it's a good thing. And uh, we advise those non-Muslims living among, among Muslims to practice it also. Practice it sincerely. And they will share in that feeling. But in general, for the Muslim society, it's a means of spreading love between the members of the society. And the Prophet ﷺ, in order to prevent people from turning it into a ritual which is uh, prescribed when you're dealing with the, poor, the powerful and the rich, so you, say, you have to give them greetings, he specified saying that the young should greet the elders with peace. The passerby should greet the one sitting. And the smaller group should greet the larger group. The one riding should greet the one walking. So he gave levels at which the peace, greetings of peace should be given. So nobody has uh, an excuse to try to not give the greetings because they feel somebody is inferior to them. Because either uh, we're going to be in a group or we're, as an individual we're either sitting or we're walking, we're passing by then we are this younger than somebody else. Somebody comes in the room. They're older than us. So we give the greetings to them. And that's the right. And it is, Prophet ﷺ made it the right of a Muslim and another Muslim that when he greets it is obligatory on the other Muslim to return the greeting. So the idea that somebody gives you salams and you feel you're too high, too powerful, too important to give them back salams, this is something despicable, something displeasing to God. So giving salams is not obligatory. It's recommended, as Prophet ﷺ recommended it. If we want to develop love amongst each other, then, as the Prophet ﷺ said, we should do it. And if we want to enter paradise, then we have to believe. But without loving each other, we cannot really achieve belief, true belief. The belief that will take us to paradise. Because the Prophet ﷺ had said, uh, one does not believe until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. So, to attain paradise, as the Prophet ﷺ had said, only believers are entering paradise. So to attain that state, one has to love his brother, his sister, in Islam. And the thing which will help to do it is to greet each other. So the Prophet ﷺ recommended it. Furthermore, he also recommended that it is superior to greet one who one knows and one who one doesn't know. The easy thing is to greet the person who you know. But most people tend to greet those who they know and those they don't know they don't give greetings to. But this is not the way. Prophet Muhammad said in praising one who gives salams, he, he said that it's the one who gives the greetings to those who he knows and those who he doesn't know. That's the true spirit is there of spreading the greetings of peace in the society where one does not neglect giving it to those who he or she doesn't know. It should also be noted that this greeting of peace, being one of the symbols of Islam, exists actually even in the Jewish and Christian texts, indicating that it was in practice from the earliest of times. When Allah revealed the true religion, 
Islam to Adam and Eve, it was there from the beginning. So we can find, for example, in Christian texts, that Jesus is reported to have greeted his followers, saying, Peace be upon you. Right? This is found in the Gospel of John. Right? How true the Gospel of John is, Allah knows best. But in chapter 20, verse 19, it's mentioned there that Jesus gave the greetings of peace to his followers. It states, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. So this was their greeting. Peace be upon you. Also, in the Old Testament, we can find in 1 Samuel 25, verse 6, Prophet David instructs his emissaries, who he sent out to a place called Nabal, Thus you shall salute him, Peace be to you, and peace be to your house, and peace be to all that you have. Peace be to you. So, it was used in the time of David, and no doubt in the times before. So, we are encouraged to give salams, and spread it amongst us, to those who we know, those who we don't know, the Prophet ﷺ gave us an order. Young people should give it to older people. We are also encouraged to give the salams uh, not only to our, those close to us, but those who are not related to us at all. If uh, a, we receive that greeting even from a non-Muslim, we should return the greeting. right? But of course, uh, there is a consideration in terms of returning the greeting, the way to return the greeting is wa alaykum, and on you also. With that, dear viewers, we'd like to thank you for being with us in this segment of our program, In the Names of Allah, in which we have looked at the name as salam the eighth in the list of names that we'll be covering. And in the coming segment, we'll be moving on to the name Al-Mu'min, we hope that you'll be with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, see.